and welcome everyone also from my, my behalf. Um, I think I should perhaps say a couple of words about our conference theme this year, but hopefully not taking too much uh, of, your, of your time be before we go to our quite exciting um, uh, for musical performance and, and also our, our, our first keynote. Um, the, the topic of our, our conference is actually something that I'm personally also very excited about. My own work relates to the political ecology of rivers and climate change and, and infrastructure uh, in the Mekong region in Southeast Asia. Uh, but, but, but anyways, we may, might, may have to <laughs> ask why to think and, and talk about infrastructure and why now. And um, I, I think many of you know that infrastructure has been a buzzword in social sciences for some time already. Uh, and, uh, and the interest in the social life of infrastructures and in the political work that they do uh, started with the science and technology studies, uh, but has have spanned uh, to geography and anthropology and, and also development studies. Um, <clears throat> and the contemporary conversation on infrastructure has been quite interdisciplinary as well. And I think in, in our conference also, we see that, that we have, we have uh, our working groups uh, approach this topic from, from many different angles. And we've also, I think we've broadened up also our participants in, in the sense that we have kind of uh, new participants, for example, from media studies and so on that might not have attended our <laughs> development days earlier, uh, which is quite wonderful. Um, but um, but why is why has infrastructure been moving from the background to 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 the foreground and and why continue thinking and talking about infrastructure? And I guess there are many answers. And I think our very I mean we are very happy to have wonderful keynotes. Uh, Timothy Oaks, Tanya Lee, Nikhil Anand, who are really key scholars on these topics and I think they will address this question from different perspectives and we will get different answers and also this will be of course a topic in in our different working groups and um, and, and and so on but I think at least analytically the infrastructural lens parallels with the attempts to make sense of human and non-human relations in new ways and um, and 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 also parallels with the, with the kind of rise of, of these new materialist approaches as well. Um, in critical development studies, it's of course uh, interesting in, in infrastructure relates to how we've been witnessing an infrastructural turn or return in global development, which is manifested in the accelerated building of new power grids, roads, dams, irrigation schemes, energy systems, ports and special economic zones. Um, but while the promises of many of these infrastructures, like large dams, seemed exhausted by the 90s, there is now a drastic comeback of, of these sort of uh, projects, or has been for some time already, uh, with new promoters and development developers, most importantly from China, um, as well as new infrastructural promises. Um, the concept that, for example, Nikhil Anand and in their great volume have, have very, very uh, interestingly <laughs> addressed and, 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 and dealt with. Um, but some of these new promises relate, for example, to the fixing and governing of, of, of climate change. And um, in climate change, both the mitigation and adaptation are very much related to the infrastructural uh, work. Uh, but the kind of paradoxical situation there is, is, is that the ways climate change materializes in more unruly environments and, and volatile ecologies, um, the, the way how these both, um, or these kind of, they, they, they both, they exceed challenge and invoke in infrastructural ordering attempts and the infrastructure projects while seeking to mitigate climate uh, risks often engender new ones. And, um, and also many of the climate related disasters, uh, such as more extreme floods or droughts are rarely just uh, climate driven or natural. Um, and rather they are very much infrastructural events and uh, where decisions that have been made regarding uh, the design and operation mode of certain infrastructural uh, schemes play a very central role. So there are many, many reasons to, to, to pay attention to this. Um, also the making of global connections and this, this connection is very much infrastructural of course. And, and there are all these infrastructural corridors, for example, that being, being built and, and, and not least under the umbrella of the Chinese Belt and Road Initiatives. And I think Timothy Oaks will, will be adding new insights um, 
on how to understand the infrastructural rise of China, which is important. Um, and and, and um, well, sport, broadly speaking, then uh, I think the infrastructural interest has very much to do with the environmental moment that we are exp experiences, experiencing and, and, and infrastructures we are dealing with. Um, or, or when we <laughs> talk about infrastructures, we are dealing with the very material ways uh, we arrange relations between humans and, and non-humans and uh, infrastructures shape people's relations with each other and with their environment. And um, we are dealing with also with the very material conditions of possibility as infrastructure enable and open up certain possibilities by, while they close down on others. And they also form power formations that get embedded in the materiality of the infrastructure um, that continue to order social and, and, and socio-natural relations in ways that often are not easily malleable by future ordering decisions. And in this way, infrastructures are very powerful in defining futures. And in many cases, the, the infrastructural power formations can be very disruptive and, and violently exclusive. And I think Tanyali will add our understanding on these different forms of infrastructural violence and the permanent harm that some infrastructural formations produce. But of course, infrastructures, some, some of them are more malleable than others. And I think previous uh, work, for example, of Nikhil Anand has highlighted the many ways how infrastructures uh, can also entail or enable incremental modifications and ad adjustments and, 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 and they in many ways also entail very leaky technologies of, of, of rule, as, as Nikhil Anand has put it. But anyways, um, it's very clear that a kind of environmental moment um, is such that uh, that we, we have come to realize that the extractive development pathways are really putting livable environments at risk and, 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 and that they are closely intertwined with infrastructural politics. And, and it's very urgent to, to think um, and imagine infrastructures in, in new ways and also think, think of the ways how they can repurpose, re, uh, uh, retrofit it, or, or, or maybe some of them have to be completely decommissioned and, and we have to think of new ways of developing new, new, uh, new types of, of infrastructures that enable more sustainable futures. Um, <clears throat> and I think and hope that our conference is, is going to be a, one of those venues where we can do this kind of critical thinking and, 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 and also uh, practice this kind of reimagination. <laughs>